I'm on the final leg of my epic Southwest Western Australia road trip. It's been so much fun. But it's not only about what you put in your mouth. Around here, the landscape's pretty impressive too. These, these are called carry trees, and they are absolute giants of the forest. They make me feel very small. They can get 40, 50, 60, even 90 metres tall. Absolutely incredible. They're endemic to this part of the world, and just up the road is the biggest of all of them. It's called the Gloucester tree. Can't wait to see it. Apparently, it's an absolute beast. Oh, they weren't wrong. That is absolutely enormous. That seems to touch the clouds. Look, the idea is pretty simple. They've actually banged a whole bunch of metal pegs into the side of the tree. It goes all the way around and around up to the very top. But actually, this is a useful tree. The reason for the platforms all the way up there, 62 metres in the air, is that during bushfire season, it enables you to see if a fire started anywhere in the district. Apparently, the view's pretty good. Do you reckon I got what it takes? I better. You might remember a few weeks ago I was in New Caledonia and I chickened out of climbing a coconut tree. Well, a few people on social suggested that I should have had some more courage, so I'm going to prove you wrong. Why? You think I was stupid enough to climb that big one, did you? <laughs> no way. I'm heading up the Gloucester tree. Now, anyone's allowed to climb the tree, but take care, because you're doing so at your own risk. Here he goes. Don't look down too often. <laughs> There's still a long way to go. <sighs> wow. It is so high. <laughs> oh my god, the view is incredible. It kind of doesn't feel right being this high up. But the remarkable thing is, this big tree is so stable. It's actually really secure. And the view. <sighs> worth every step of the climb. Oh, what an adventure. High up amongst the clouds almost. But I tell you, I am really glad to have my feet on solid earth again. It was an adventure. But the adventure continues because around this part of the world, there's some amazing cheese to discover. That's my next stop. Cambrai Gourmet Cheese is definitely not your usual dairy. There's not a cow to be seen, nor even a goat. No, guys, this here is a sheep dairy. There's some healthy looking sheep here, Bruce. How much milk are you going to get out of a sheep of a day? Oh, once, once the lambs are off, somewhere around 1.6 to 1.8 litres. For, for animal milk. per day? Yeah. Okay. We only milk once a day. So when Bruce gets his milk going, I can't wait to see what it turns into. Of all the things you make here, the one I've really come to try is a thing called Farmhouse Gold. It recently won a champion prize at the Perth Dairy Awards. All right, this I need to try. Right. Oh, may I? Wow. It's hard to describe just how delicious this is. It's remarkably sweet, a lovely acidic tang to it, and such a lingering perfume. It's going to have a good melt distance, meltiness, which would make it just ideal to help me reinvent a family classic recipe. Can I grab a wedge at this one? Absolutely. So with Cambrai's Farmhouse Gold Cheese, I've got all the elements I need to recreate one of the world's most popular dishes. When was the last time that you made a chicken cordon bleu? Look, it really is a classic for a reason. It's fantastic. I'll tell you, if you start with great cheese and great pork product, you can't go wrong. It's an absolute winner. First up, though, the chicken breasts. You just take a sharp knife and slice them in two. Then you need to bash them a little bit to flatten them. So if you're wondering why it is that we bash the chicken, it's not therapy for me, although it might help. Now, the bigger thing is we've got to get it even, because in a minute we're going to fill the middle with cheese and bacon. We want it to cook evenly. Speaking of which, next up we're going to grab a small piece of cheese for each one, say about 15, 20 grams, and wrap them in an individual slice of bacon. Well, there done. That was pretty easy. Next, we do need to season the chicken. And to keep it really flavoursome, I use celery salt and be generous with it. Once that's done, we'll talk about crumbing. I always use multigrain crumbs. It's just a slightly healthier version, better for you. Secondly, with your egg mix, always add a splash of milk. It doesn't just add flavour, it also helps the eggs to stick better to whatever it is that you're crumbing, and that's going to give you a better crunch. And if you want really professional results, a quick double crumb. Back in the egg wash, back in the bread crumbs.
You've got to love a mock-up kitchen. This really is my absolutely favourite way to cook. Now, for your Cordon Bleu, it's a shallow fry problem. You need about a centimetre and a half of Australian extra virgin olive oil to cook in. Moderate heat only, don't go too fast. You need to keep turning it. All up should be about 10 to 12 minutes. Deep golden brown, crispy and cooked through to perfection. At this point, let them drain on some kitchen paper. Meanwhile, one last thing we can do. We've got this Australian extra virgin olive oil that's been heated up. Don't let it go to waste. We'll use that to cook some green beans. <laughs> Trust me, your family are going to love this take on the classic chicken cordon bleu. What I love about it is it shows that good ingredients are what transform regular recipes into something really great. That is absolutely brilliant. Mm. I have had the absolute best time visiting here in southwest Western Australia. What an incredible part of the world. I mean, the food in me loves the ingredients, the scenery's been spectacular, but the bit that really ties it all together are the lovely people that I've met. Really fantastic people.